Now I'll do another test of the orange Spectra Orange DSM2 receiver. This time I'm testing the 6th channel receiver. It's flying again piggyback on top of this aerobatic plane which is operated at 35 megahertz. Um, during the last test it looked like this receiver performed much better on 7.4 volts directly on the 2S LiPo um, than on the 5 volt battery or the 5 volt ESC. So now I'm doing a test dedicated to see what the influence is of the um, receiver power supply, the receiver power voltage. Um, I'm testing another 6 channel receiver to see the difference and I'm making three flights and recording the servo output signal on this MP3 player which is analyzed by my computer program I'll show you later and it's operated first on 5 volts with this U-back with this small dip switch in it's giving 5 volts without it's giving 6 volts to the receiver and then I'm going to connect it directly with the um, the T um, connector directly to the LiPo in order to provide the receiver with 7.4 volts. Let's see the difference. Uh, I'll make three flights. I'll go to climb to about 200 meters, give a signal on the servo signal to uh, make a mark of where the highest point is reached. I'm going back, I'm landing and giving another signal on the servo signal to indicate the point after the landing. That was the transmitter asking to be flying. So now I'll be flying. I'll give you the other reports later. Now, this was the result of the test last week. The first recording on 5 volt with the battery eliminating circuit. Here you can see a few short disturbances, the green ones yellow one between two and five, five missed frames which is just acceptable and one orange which is clearly not acceptable about half a second. Then the second recording last week was on 7.4 volts directly on the 2S LiPo battery. Only two spikes of one missed frame, the green ones, which is to be regarded as normal and acceptable. Here you can see the flight. The, before the start of the flight I moved the servo stick three times to indicate the start of the flight. Then on the highest point here do the same about or two times to indicate the highest point. This is about 200 meters high. Then do the remainder of the flight, aerobatics and what I want to do. And after the landing I indicate this point with four servo movements. So anything after the landing and before the start is not relevant. Um, and usually the most difficult point is at the farthest distance, although 200 meters is not very far for a 2.4 gigahertz receiver. If we look at the histograms of these flights, things are even more clear. The histogram of the 5 volt, few short spikes, they are acceptable for single missed frames, two double missed frames, and here is one disturbance of about half a second, 20 missed frames. This is typically for orange, I'll come back on that. Then the same for the 7.4 volt, directly on the LiPo battery, only two single missed frames which is as good as the original Spectrum receivers. Then I repeated this test. Now this is the same receiver again on 7.4 volts and this time the result is terrible here around the highest point. There are three yellow uh, orange um, arrows which indicate a disturbance of between 6 and 20 sequential frames, missed frames, 
Um, but then again in the histogram, let's look at the histogram. Here you can see it's 19 missed frames after another again, one half a second. So this is typically for the orange receivers. Um, either they've got very short disturbances or it's about half a second. They seem to have problems when losing the signal to regain the contact uh, or to do an internal reset or whatever, which takes about half a second. Now I did the same test also with another receiver. Now this was on the battery eliminating circuit set on 6 volt. Excellent, not a single missed frame. And then again the same on 7.4 volts. One long disturbance, one orange, which is not acceptable about half a second again. So my theory that this receiver would perform great on 7.4 volts is unfortunately not true. That would be a good solution. Um, so most probably it's not the internal voltage regulation of the receiver that's the problem. Um, my suspect is the that the um, uh, my suspicion is that the processor is run on a too low frequency or there's um, uh, error correction software which is not as functioning as good as in the original receivers because on the disturbances are usually on the uh, greatest distance uh, where the signal strength is the lowest but signal strength alone is not the reason because it doesn't happen always but the error correction has to do the hardest work um, at the greatest distance so this seems to be or this is my suspect um, what is why the orange receivers are performing less than the original receivers. There's one exception, please look at my other videos. They've got one receiver which is performing excellent. Um, now I'm also coming to a mechanical quality control. Um, I'll show you at the end of this movie a small example of this. Um, and I'll to check the um, variance between recordings, I did um, four flights, four recordings under exactly the same circumstances. Um, I'll first show you these. Now I did this test doing four recordings under exactly the same circumstances, uh, all in the battery eliminating circuit set at 5 volts. This was the first recording with three disturbances of about half a second, um, one during the climb and two at the highest point again. Uh, please note that after this, the, from 120 seconds to 300 seconds, 180 seconds, 3 minutes, um, there's only one very short disturbance. So it's not that the receivers doesn't, do not work. Um, there's something wrong with the error, error correction or something else which I don't know. Uh, here around the highest point, again, the most of the um, transmission failures happened. Then the second flight, um, this was before, this time probably I shielded the uh, receiver um, when changing the battery of the uh, carrying aeroplane, so this has to be neglected. But during the flight, again, at the highest point, to yellow, um, arrows to no to orange arrows of about half a second. Um, the this is the dark orange indicating a longer disturbance of about one second. But please neglect this part. And the third recording, only one exactly at the highest point. And then the last recording, which was a longer flight, uh, a lot of disturbances, even a few very long ones on the highest point and after that a very long flight with only a few very short spikes which are acceptable. Here you can see the variation of the um, number of disturbances. Uh, sometimes there's a lot of disturbances, sometimes there's flights without any or hardly without any, only with uh, single missed frames. 
um, there's a lot of variance between different flights on exactly the same tested up the same day everything the same now let's take a look at the quality control two receivers as they have been delivered delivered thank you now this is not what quality control should be uh, these are two orange receivers six channel as they come out of the box uh, look at the upper one the length of the antenna is very important in for 2.4 gigahertz receivers look at the upper one the length of the antenna is just over three centimeters which is okay it should be between 30 and 32 millimeters but then look at the lower one it's almost four centimeters it's way too long for 2.4 gigahertz um, this should not have come out of the factory of course it's easy for me to correct this to just cut off the uh, the, the antenna wire but this is not the way they should be delivered not everyone's checking this is controlling the length of the antenna of a receiver it should come right okay out of the box so so far so far for the six channel receivers for me the six channel receivers are only good for uh, park flyers uh, will not cover long distance and even these receivers I only trust after an extensive check on the back of my um, aerobatic plane operated on, on 35 megahertz. So far for this test. Thanks for listening.